My passion for wildlife has been with me from a very young age, but an encounter with my first whale species in Yorkshire in 2013 made me realise my knowledge of British mammals was very limited. I decided to do some research and purchase several books, but I wanted to see what they looked like. Incredibly, there was no DVD available, and it is with that the project began. Realising the size of the task in hand, my very good friend Paul Wetton agreed to join me, bringing many skills to the project. We knew straight away from our immediate research that our biggest challenges were going to be bats and cetaceans. We chose to start our project with bats. We contacted the Bat Conservation Trust for advice and they quickly put us in touch with Jenny Clark, MBE, who runs a Sussex Bat Hospital. And Donna and Graham Street, who run the Bat Hospital on the Isle of Wight. Both hospitals have bats in long-term care and we were very kindly given permission to film them obtaining some wonderful footage. There are 18 species of bat throughout Britain and all of these are featured on the film. To capture each one we had many different approaches we joined county bat groups, including Herefordshire, Wiltshire and Nottinghamshire, and took part in many of their surveys. These surveys are all part of the National Bat Monitoring Programme, which help us to understand more about these elusive mammals. Bat boxes are checked on a regular basis for occupancy, and each bat is weighed and measured. Some are issued with rings for future identification. Elbow, wrist, thumb, two fingers along the leading edge, and then four and five fingers, so it's just like a human hand. We were also invited to join bat groups across the country conducting bat trapping sessions. Harp traps and mist nets were used to catch the bats and social calls were played to lure them in. With the nets in place all we had to do was wait for nightfall and the bats to arrive. Bats were quickly and carefully collected from the traps and placed in bags ready for processing. A team of both experts and novices were ready to capture data. Each bat was thoroughly examined to establish species type, sex, size and weight. Even the teeth were closely examined, as this can help to correctly identify some species. So 
Who would have thought I'd have had so much fun with some truly wonderful people in the middle of a wood during the early hours? <laughs> Once all the data was collected, the bats were photographed and quickly released. We were keen to learn more about the hard work carried out by these dedicated teams, so I joined the Herefordshire Mammal Group as they conducted a survey to try and establish the whereabouts of a colony of naturalist bats that had taken up residency in a local church. Their droppings were causing a bit of a problem for the vicar and her congregation. located the colony of bats and placed alternative bat boxes outside the church for the bats to use. We were finally left with just one species of bat to capture on film, the greater mouse eared bat. These were officially declared extinct in 1990, but just one solitary individual has remained in southern England since 2002, so we felt it was important to feature it on the guide. Due to the security and protection of the bat, the location is not given to any member of the public, so filming the resident UK individual was going to be impossible. Because of this, we took a trip to Poland. Here we filmed them in their thousands where they roost in World War II bunkers at Nitra Peric. The depth and darkness of the tunnels cannot be described, but on reaching them it was an incredible experience, all of which has been captured on film. Next we turned our attention to cetaceans. The majority of these have been filmed in the coastal waters of the British Isles. Some amazing footage of dolphins leaping out of the water featuring the film. We have spent hours on boats throughout this project to ensure we really do demonstrate and capture the true beauty of the sea mammals we are so lucky to have in our waters. We did, however, have some difficulty with some species of cetacean. This is footage of a humpback whale filmed in Norfolk, and as you can see, it's a little distant. We were very concerned it would not be of high enough quality to feature on the film, and so decided to head into the Arctic Circle to Tromsø in Norway. Here we were witness to some incredible scenes. Humpback and orcas feeding on migrating herring in the fjords, literally within metres of the boat. Again, another amazing experience which we are very proud to be able to share with you on film. We even got the surprise of our lives when a pair of humpback whales fed right next to the boat.
one species of mammal that quite literally gave us the runaround was the brown hare. We were very keen to film brown hares boxing. We spent months trying to obtain the footage required, but hares spend most of their time sat motionless during the day. Much of the brief action that we witnessed would end in nothing more than a standoff. And even when we captured a few punches, the views were obscured. Our perseverance finally paid off one sunny morning in Norfolk. I can't explain what happened, but hares all over the county had woke up with their boxing gloves on. In order to obtain decent footage of some species in the wild, we needed to become invisible, and to do this we constructed our own hides from branches and foliage. With patience we obtained views like these. We knew our small mammal species would be another challenge for us and so seek the help of an expert. Dr Mark Howes has a wealth of knowledge and experience in small mammal trapping and kindly trapped almost all of the species we needed. We even constructed our own mini film sets to film them in and this allowed us to obtain some beautiful close-up footage. The look of the project was very important to us and we were both keen to give the viewer the best tools possible to help with identification. We turned our initial concept drawings into detailed artwork. Even the cover design took a few turns before we agreed on the finished design. Photographs obtained of footprints were not always clear, and we felt that our initial drawings were a little vague. We settled for a combination of the two, as we felt these were more accurate. Even the menu designs for the DVD went through a series of changes before we agreed on the final look. Hours were spent on artwork for the project. The overall look was important to us, as was the information provided for the viewer.
Due to the difficulties of filming some species in the wild, we obtained some of our footage in captivity. We would like to thank the Wildlife Centre throughout the UK for their support in this, as their help has enabled us to create a complete guide. We have had an amazing two years creating Britain's first ever DVD guide to its mammal species. Along the way we have met some truly inspiring individuals who dedicate so much of their time to the welfare of British mammals. We believe we have fulfilled our original vision for the film in creating a guide that will provide you with the tools to get out and witness our wonderful mammal species. We very much hope you enjoy watching the film as much as we have felt so privileged to create it. Got my leg. Okay, whenever so, you want to put the. Yeah. <laughs> Any just fine. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs>